What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Zhiyun Crane 2. First we're going to look at the physical characteristics and the build of it, then we'll look at some of the features that this handheld gimbal offers, and then some quirks that I've found while using this gimbal. Then we'll take a look at some footage that was all shot and captured on the Crane 2 so you can see what it can do. Let's roll the intro. So starting off with the build, it has a really solid aluminum construction and comes in just under three pounds. I believe it's right around 2.75 pounds, which makes it pretty light and compact. Its small size also makes it super easy to just throw in your backpack and with the durable build, you don't really have to worry about it getting banged around or anything like that. Even though the gimbal itself is pretty small and compact, it can hold a pretty decent payload, all the way up to seven pounds, which is quite a bit. And that actually holds the 1DX Mark II with a 16 to 35. And you can even put like a C200 stripped down with a small lens on it. Now, if you've seen or used the older models in the past, you'll really appreciate some of these new upgrades. For one is the built-in quick release system. So instead of having to screw it in every single time, it's now just on a quick release plate so you can easily adjust it back and forth for balancing and you can also swap it directly from the gimbal to a tripod and then back to the gimbal to make onset really quick and easy. Going around to the back side of the gimbal where all the interface is next to the joystick that you use to control the camera movements is now a small LCD screen and this has a bunch of things in it and really just quickly shows you which mode you're in, what your battery level is and your Bluetooth connectivity. This LCD screen pretty much negates any reason for pulling out your phone and getting on the app unless you want to really fine tune how the gimbal is performing and how the motors are working. And with specific cameras, you also have control over camera settings, which I'll get more into in a little bit. Right below the LCD screen next to the joystick, there's also a record start stop button, so you can obviously start and stop recording. And another really big addition to this one is the built-in follow focus. So with some specific cameras, you can actually pull focus through the camera and through the autofocus system of the lens. And this makes it really easy to gain control back and gain that creative rack focusing ability that you'd normally just have to leave up to your camera to decide what to focus on. And lastly, gimbals have always been a pain to put down and take a break from. So the included tripod legs are a really nice addition. They allow you to go from shooting to sitting down to standing back up and shooting again. And it gives you a little bit extra to hold on to. For even better control and one of my favorite accessories that the Crane 2 has is the mini dual grip. And this basically, instead of putting your hand below it using the tripod legs, it puts it right beside it. You get a lot more control this way and it's a little bit easier to hold and it keeps your hands nice and compact instead of spreading them out like the dual grip does and having them on either side of the camera, it keeps it all nice and close so you're still a pretty small profile. So that's all the physical characteristics of the gimbal. Now let's dive into some of the features that make this thing so awesome. So the first thing is there's three different modes that you can use it in. There's PF or pan lock. And what this does is lock the tilt so that you can actually pan around and use the gimbal to rotate and pan your shots. Then there is the lock mode, which locks down everything and the camera will stay in that position and you use the joystick to navigate around. And then the last one is the follow mode. So any movements you do with the gimbal, so panning and tilting, the camera will do that with it as well. And a fun little thing, if you triple click that mode button, it'll actually put it into a selfie mode and flip the camera around on you. And you can do some cinematic, very smooth vlogging style stuff if you wanna do that. Because of how the gimbal is set up, it's actually really easy to get into inverted mode as well. You don't have to like rearrange it and remount anything. You can basically just go from up high all the way down low and then bring it right back up in the same shot. So it gives you some really cool and dynamic boom shots going from like panning across the ground all the way up and then looking down on something. Like I mentioned a little bit earlier about the camera settings, there's a lot of cameras out there that this supports and you're able to control camera settings through the gimbal. So there's no more taking your hands off of the grip and having to go into the camera system. You can do it all on the menu. So you can change your aperture, your ISO, your shutter speed, and you can even go in and do your autofocus and stuff like that. So you have pretty much full manual control of anything you need during a shot. Now the downside of this is it is a little bit limited right now for the compatibility. I know the 5D Mark IV is one of the cameras that can do everything and they also have some Sony cameras and some other Canon cameras and eventually I think down the line they're adding in some of the Panasonic ones as well. I'm going to leave a link or a PDF or whatever it is to the compatibility chart for the gimbal so it shows you exactly what cameras can do what on the different features and stuff like that. And then the last thing, which is what's so impressive about this gimbal, is it being lightweight and having the power it does in the motors, is you get an amazing battery life. 
up to 18 hours, which is absolutely insane. Like that's multiple days of shooting. And it's really cheap to get these extra batteries. You can buy a set of three of them, which is what you need to run the gimbal for $33 on B&H. So that's, if you spend an extra hundred bucks, you can get four sets of batteries and you can run for multiple days without having to charge these batteries, which is just insane. Now let's get into some of the quirks that I've found while using this. For one, which has been fixed on a lot of newer gimbals, is the motor mount right in the back. If you don't have a flip out screen, this blocks your view of the LCD if you're trying to get like a head height shot. If you're going down low or you're going up high, you still have pretty good viewing angle uh, looking up at it, but it is a little bit difficult to try and get those head height shots. The next thing is with those bigger cameras like the 1DX or the C200, you have to get the drop extension arm. And with this fully extended to get that balance right, you actually get limited flexibility in where you can pan and rotate without the bottom of the gimbal hitting it. I suggest putting it in the follow mode so it does all the pan and tilt for you and that will make it so that the camera or whatever the pan arm is doesn't hit somewhere else on the gimbal. If you're in one of the other modes like lock mode, you have to be careful of what direction you're moving it because it might hit the plate on the bottom and shake your footage. The last thing is the menus are a little bit funky. I mean, they work and all of the functionality is there, but they can be a little tricky to navigate and they're not very well laid out, but you have all the functionality so I can't complain too much. So that's a quick basic overview of the build and some of the features and then things that I've found while using it. Now let me show you some footage that you can get with this thing and then we'll wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed that awesome footage. Thanks so much to James Matthews from James Matthews Media. I'm gonna leave all of his information in the description below if you wanna check out all of his footage. He has some really killer stuff over on his YouTube channel and on his Instagram, so I'll leave all of that down below. If you wanna try it out for yourself, head on over to LensProtego or LensRentals.com and use the code ZCRANE15 to get 15% off a rental of a Zion Crane. If you guys have any questions about the Zion Crane, make sure to leave those down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.